listening to another episode of the Ghost Hunter Podcast. Last week, the takes got so spicy and were so hot that we had to push the episode to two weeks. So, without further ado, here is part two of our episode of Theme Park and Roller Coaster Hot Takes with me, Andrew, and then Shane and John. Happy listening. Why is it spicy? <laughs> We're going to go to the most polarizing park out of any of these hot takes, and it's going to be a really quick, I'm going to talk to both of you guys based on what you think, because we got hot takes on Cedar Point about Steel Vengeance, about Magnum XL200, about Millennium Force and Maverick. And there are, I mean, a lot of people, again, kind of like I was saying about RMC, everyone's like, Steel Vengeance is so great. Steel Vengeance is so great. I'm like counting here. There's six comments that we got on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Steel Vengeance, not a top 10 coaster. Uh, Cedar Point has 10 other coasters I'd rather ride than Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance as mid AF. <laughs> Vengeance is overhyped. I don't know what mid AF is. Shane, can you explain? You're the you're a resident young person. <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're just kind of saying it's nothing special. Um, okay. You know, not not anything to write home about. Got it. Well, and the same thing with Magnum. And I mean, Magnum is better than Millennium. Magnum is the third best coaster at Cedar Point, but also Magnum sucks. Magnum XL overrated. And then same thing with Millennium Force. Uh, Matthew C. Soup says Millennium Force is underrated and overhated, while our guy Clint over at Thrill Geek says Millennium Force is overrated. And then Maverick uh, Terran Upkey says Maverick is awful. And then M.O. Buckeyes 42 says Maverick is the best ride at Cedar Point. So we're just going to we're going to solve it right now. OK, John and Shane, I'll start with you. Steel Vengeance, overrated, underrated. What do you think? I think it's I, I think it's rated just as it should be. I think it I think it's a top tier RMC. Um, I mean it. It's it, and again, I keep calling RMCs works of art because I think they are. But it's it's an incredible attraction, and I have only ridden uh, Steel Vengeance uh, a, a few times in the span of. Um, a couple of days at Coaster Mania, and it it's one of those things I definitely need to get back to Cedar Point soon to give it a few more rides. And you know, when you first ride a roller coaster, there's a lot of adrenaline, and you know, it's it, there's kind of that that um, you know you're in the moment, and you're it, it's a little hard to on the spot kind of take it all in. And so I definitely need to go back, but I. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great roller coaster. The element, I mean, it's, it's, I think it, it redefines or redefined what, what RMC can do with, with these wooden coasters. And I, th- I think it's, it's great. I think for some people it's overrated and others it might be underrated. Okay, perfect. I didn't get to ride Seal Vengeance again. Another coaster I got walked off of. I'm not bitter. We're not going to talk about it. Um, but John, I'll go back to you and I'll give you my opinion. Magnum XL 200, good, bad. I think it is fine. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's awful. I've been on worse coasters. I've been on better coasters. What do you think? This one, okay. First of all, b- before you say anything, John, I just want to chime in. This comment here uh, from I am Matt R says Magnum XL two hundred is the best steel coaster in the country. Which I just wanted to highlight that because I've never heard that opinion before. No. Oh, th- there are some Magnum XL stands, let me tell you, because I have met them and they will not stand down from that. So this is not um, totally shocking. I don't agree with it, but it, yeah, they, they are some diehard fanatics, Magnum fanatics. Millennium Force, underrated, overrated. John, what do you think? I loved it. It, it was exactly what I expected it to be. Um, amazing views, amazing layout, great pacing, um, you know, comfortable, not glass smooth by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it really landed exactly where I thought it was going to be. And, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially that night ride in the fog, like that amazing. Okay. I think it's overrated, but that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll side with, uh, Clint at Thrill Geek because he's right. It's, it's overrated. And then finally from Cedar Point, uh, Maverick. I disagree with Taryn who says Maverick is awful. It's certainly my favorite ride at Cedar Point because I enjoyed it the most during my most recent visit, but that was a trip where I did not get on Dragster, uh, Millennium Force, which I had previously ridden, or Steel Vengeance. But Maverick, hands down, probably my favorite coaster at Cedar Point. Yeah, Maverick was amazing. I, uh, I definitely was 
went in with, I think, lower than the normal expectations. I just was never, I, I followed it pretty closely when it was being constructed and the layout was, um, you know, again, I love unconventional layouts and Maverick is pretty much a textbook example of an unconventional coaster layout, but uh, it really blew me away and I can see why it's it's so popular and why it still draws the crowd that, that it does today. And then we're going to uh, move on to some, some general coaster takes um, and then John, first one's going to go to you. All right. Um, big business CT says any coaster with the traditional start going up a slow incline is now old school. I think it's, it's certainly old school. I would say it's, it's more traditional. Like you said, I, I think it's always going to be, there's always that, especially for a new coaster rider uh, or just, I think, your general person, general public, member of the general public, that's going to be when you think of roller coaster, that's the first thing that's going to pop into their head is a, you know, a slow ascent to the top, followed by a big drop, and then all the um, crazy inversions and elements. And so I think um, I, I think it's it's kind of the the baseline, so to speak. I think it's it's the original style. It is timeless. I don't think it will ever um, fall to the wayside compared to launches and what other crazy technology comes down the pipeline. I think it's, um, I, I think it will always be the, the first and foremost, the the most popular style, just because that the adrenaline and the anticipation of climbing up the lift hill with the um, the click clack and it's just it. I mean that that is a roller coaster to me and. Um, I, I think it's always going to be, um, number one for both for guests and manufacturers, most manufacturers, obviously the ones that don't offer that type, then maybe not. I don't know how I feel about like roller coasters of any kind that aren't like leap the dips being classified as old school because that (laughs) makes me feel old and I don't like that. (laughs) Next up, we've got a take from farm stuffs with a Z who says off the shelf coasters are okay. If they add something, a park or region is missing. I 100% agree with this. Yep, um, me too. I, I think a, a coaster, I mean, I know Adventureland is a good example. Uh, the Gerslauer, not the Euro, the infinity coaster from Gerslauer. I mean, it is an off the shelf model, but it does so much for that park. And the same thing with their SNS uh, free spin that they're building this year. Uh, Dragon Slayer. I mean, it's not the, the standard Batman uh, 4D free spin, but it does a ton for that park and will get guests to visit. So I think there's nothing wrong with uh, off the shelf coasters to me, unless it's an SLC. Don't build any more SLCs. <laughs> but um, off the shelf coasters are fine. I think that's a really good. That's a good take from Farm Stuffs. Yep, completely agree. Um, thing that comes to mind most for me is the RMC Raptors um, cloned coasters that all the places they've been put in. Um, are benefiting the region and the park and something they need. So, um, and even with the free spins, I agree, they can be good if they're offering something new to the people who are in that area. And okay, next up, uh, th- this comment made me laugh. It's from uh, A Passhole who says, Intense coasters are meant for teens and 20 somethings until their inner ears fully develop. Look, as a teen slash 20 something, I love intense coasters, but I also love. Coasters are intense. Uh, I guess we're calling any coaster with a lift hill old school. Um, so I like those just as well as, you know, launch coasters and RMCs. So I don't know what you guys think about this comment. Are we going to have to bleep that person's name? Uh, possibly. <laughs> Not really. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's Shane. I think it's funny that you wanted to take this. Again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, crack, <laughs> crack on you for being young and John, you'll be at 20 something for what? Like another month at this point. Yeah, six months, but, you know, who's counting? Yeah, that's fine. Your inner ears are developed. You still like intense coasters. Yeah. <laughs> um, at the at the ripe old age of 31, I'm getting up there in age where my, my ear is more than developed and I might need a break, but I still don't mind an intense coaster here and there. Well, it's so funny. It really varies from day to day. Sometimes I can go to parks, and, and I would love to, to try and research this and, and figure out what's going on. Some days... I can go and just marathon lightning rod or like the day that I went to King's Dominion and rode I-305 as many times as I did. And then other days, 
it's like I am one and done. Even like a Batman the Ride at Great America or or something else. It's just I can do one or two rides on the more intense coasters and then I'm done. I have to tap out. So I love rewritable coasters, but there is something about to say about that intensity. And um, I hope that, you know, as I exit my 20s and enter my 30s and 40s, I hope that I'm still able to at least tolerate some of the more intense um, intense coasters because I do think they are um, can be really spectacular in, in small doses. Agreed. Uh, the next comment is from Neil C., uh, and they say a rough ride really doesn't matter. If you want something buttery smooth, go ride a train. Um, Has this person ever rode a train? Uh, I, I actually, yeah, I don't know. I would say a good, you know, B and M is smoother than any public transportation train that I've been on. But yeah, um, rough rides don't really bother me. Some of them are awful. I'm thinking Thunderhead at Dorney Park right now and uh, Wildcat. Uh, the old one, at least at Lake Compounds. So a rough coaster really can beat you up, but I don't think that necessarily is a bad thing or a good thing. It just kind of is characterized by the ride. But buttery smooth, I mean, RMC and B&M are making some of the best coasters out there. So I'm going to stick with those and let let Neil C uh, go ride the Amtrak. Yeah, Amtrak's not comfortable. I, <laughs> I took a train trip once when I was a kid, and I just remember we were in one of those sleeper cars, and it was like constantly waking up at night because I was being jostled so much. So I don't, I don't know what trains Neil C is riding. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move on to uh, launch coasters now. And Shane, you got one from who you got one from? Uh, Grant P says Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain is the most overrated launch coaster in existence. I can't speak to that, but I will say I was a bit underwhelmed. Um, and John, I'm curious if you had the same experience. Um, you know, when you see the stats of a hundred mile an hour launch, um, you know, 300, 400 feet tall, that is a big number, uh, especially for um, someone who doesn't uh, ride as many coasters. I would think that they would look at that and kind of be intimidated. But I think that the launch, it, it takes so long to build up uh, that you barely even notice it. Um, like I think even something like uh, Storm Runner at Hershey Park or maybe even Rock and Roller Coasters because it's indoors seemed to be a more intense launch than Superman Escape from Krypton. Even though I really enjoyed the ride, I do think just comparing the stats to the actual experience – Definitely a little underwhelmed, I think. Yeah, I, and I, I think I, I would not call launch coasters boring or basic. I mean, even the less intense ones, I think, are fun and just provide a totally different sensation and, and experience. Um, I will say Superman, I rode after having ridden Top Thrill Dragster uh, for the first time the year prior, and it was definitely somewhat of a letdown. I'm glad that the, the cars are still reversed because I think it's a much better ride i guess being able to look down and and see you know see the park from from that height but yeah it was it was more for me just finally riding this coaster that i've seen and seen in books and tv yeah, me shows too, me too yeah it was more of the it was more of like a sentimental ride just or a little bit of a surreal experience finally being on this ride that you know, now in this Magic Mountains lineup isn't that, you know, groundbreaking aside from its height and speed, but uh, it was still fun just to finally ride it. So definitely not nothing that I would jump back in line for, which there was no line for it, which I think says a lot, but um, it, it was, yeah, it was fun. It was different. It was, you know, at this point, I think it's one of a kind. Are there any more? Uh, in that style? I don't uh, think I so. Think Cause the, that one in Australia is gone. Yeah. So, right. So yeah, it was, it was fine. It was fine. I, I, but, um, I don't know if anyone is really rating it as a, as a top, you know, a top tier coaster. So I don't know if I would call it overrated. We're going to move on to some, uh, B and M talk. And again, for a brand or a manufacturer, that a lot of people seem to like, there was a lot of comments that, you know, B and M's are overhyped. 
uh b and m coasters suck 98 percent of b and m suck but two percent <laughs> are fine i guess <laughs> but i want to get you guys opinion because you've both been to six flags magic mountain that has more b and m's but carson ak says riddler's revenge is the best b and m in california i have not been to six flags magic mountain i have a hard time thinking that a b and m stand up anywhere in the world i don't care how long it is what comic book character you theme it after. I have a hard time believing it's the best co- the best B&M in California because I've ridden Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet's great, but it, is there a better b and I feel like even at Magic Mountain, having not ridden Tatsu, I feel yeah. like Tatsu's got to be a better b and I mean, it is 100%. And not only Tatsu, but about 300 feet away from Riddler's Revenge is Batman the Ride, the invert, which I think is a better b and uh, than Riddler's Revenge. Uh, and I should say Riddler's Revenge is not bad. I was actually pleasantly surprised um, that this ride did not hurt me a lot. Uh, I, I didn't mind Riddler's Revenge. I thought it was fine. Um, I, you know, Scream is also in that part, the B&M Floorless. I don't really know which one uh, I liked better. I didn't really compare them. Um, but just, th- I mean, Tatsu is just fantastic. And Batman the Ride is too. Um, both at the same park. And then, you know, not to mention, like you said, Andrew, Silver Bullet is in California also. So that's certainly not the case for me. I don't know, John, what what do you, what's your opinion? Yeah, I, you know, I was kind of leaning towards this. I was like, well, Scream is kind of an off the shelf. I think it's a clone of uh, Medusa or Bizarro at um, Great Adventure. And yeah, and so you said Batman, and I am a huge, you know, having spent so much time at Great America, that that coaster, yes, of course, it's a clone, but also being a huge Batman fan, it's, I, I love Batman the Ride, all of them, all the ones that I've been on. Um, I will say Riddler's Revenge was, I, I really, and I guess I went in with little to no expectations just because it is a B&M stand up and aside from Georgia Scorcher. They don't have the best reputation, so I think I was just pleasantly surprised. Tatsu, I love that from, you know, a onlooker and a rider until the pretzel loop. I detest being in flying coaster pretzel loops. Oh, they, oh, that's a hot take right there. That is a hot take, I know, but my tiny little heart just cannot handle the forces <laughs> of a pretzel loop, and as much as I like to you know, to ride flying coasters and I, you know, I can get through them, but I just, I would re-ride Riddler's Revenge many more times before I re-rode Tatsu. And I hate that. I wow. hate that I'm like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I know that's what I should have added that to the hot take. Yeah. At the top of I the will show. say, I, I do think uh, the pretz loop on Tatsu is the most intense element I've been on. Maybe besides Skyrush's first drop, but I thought it was more intense than anything. Uh, on X2 and I, I didn't rewrite it cause we only wrote everything once that day. Um, but yeah, you have Tatsu in the same park as religious friends. So I, I think that I do not agree with this hot take. Yeah. We got to get emperor open down at uh, SeaWorld world San Diego too. get another B and M out there on the uh, West coast. Agreed. All right. Next we have Chas Brosmer says Intamin coasters are better than B and M coasters. Number two, B and M gigas are boring. Three B and M hypers or B and M gigas are boring in parentheses, especially Orion. And then three B and M hypers are way better than their gigas. So lots of <laughs> stuff to unpack here. This is really three relatively unrelated hot takes in one. So I'll start with number one: Intamin coasters are better than B and M coasters. I think this is way too broad of a, a of a comparison just because both of them make different types of roller coasters. I mean, in general, I I, I mean, these are all obviously hot takes are subjective, but this one especially, there are just so many factors that play into this um, that it's really hard to make a, such a blanket statement. I would say that Intamin is more innovative than, than B&M. They are a little bit more... Uh, more, I guess you could say, risk takers. Um, B and M is is very much a tried and true kind of play by the rules manufacturer to an extent. Um, so I think it just you know it it's really a personal preference. Do you prefer being a little bit more adventurous with your you know coaster rides? Do you look for that innovation or do you look for that tried and true, high quality, dependable? Um, that dependable coaster. And so I think it's really, you know, which of those two things you prefer. So unfortunately I don't have, 
Um, I can't really confirm or uh, disagree with this. What about you guys? Well, yeah, I knew that was coming. Uh, I disagree. I disagree with that. Uh, I prefer Intamins. But again, th- this is just purely down to personal taste. Um, and I don't, Andrew, I'm sure B- saying B&M gigas are boring. I mean, B&Ms are better than Intamins. I, I I Done. think the third one, the third one's a fair point. I think some people prefer the hypers of the gigas, but to say gigas are boring, I, I just I don't know who Chaz Brosmer is. I'm gonna fight him. Now. <laughs> it's not really, I might, if Chaz, if you're listening, I'm not gonna fight you. But like, if you've been on Fury, have you been on? I mean, I haven't been on Leviathan. I'm gonna be on Orion later this summer, and I'm excited for it. Um, but no, they're not boring. <laughs> just no. Okay, well, <laughs> moving off that, this one from 16-Bit Coaster says, X2 in the last row outside seat is the biggest steaming pile of garbage ride experience on any coaster anywhere. I don't even know where to start with this. I rode X- my one ride on X2 was in the last row in the outside seat. It was one of the most impressive and fun rides I've ever had on anything. Um, I mean, to say it's a steaming pile of garbage – uh, on any coaster anywhere, uh, that's just wild. Um, I just cannot agree with that. You know, it may be too intense for some people, or it just might not be the type of coaster experience that people like. Um, but for me personally, it was exactly what I was looking for uh, from that ride. It was, you know, just incredibly intense um, that I, I didn't want to rewrite it right after, but absolutely would have done it again in that exact same seat. John, I don't know where you wrote it or your experience with it, but I thought it was awesome. Yeah, this was, um, I think this may, I think this was our first ride. Um, yeah, this was mine too. We wrote it earlier. Yeah. yeah, we wrote it earlier in the day. And I just, it was, X2 is one of those coasters you have to ride more than once. I, I was so just awestruck over the whole experience. It just, it was, you know, obviously unlike anything I'd been on before. I knew I could not get right back in line and do it again if we had had time. It was very intense. It was very disorienting. That's not my even, you know, I throw five is intense, but you still kind of obviously have a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, you're aware of kind of what you're doing. <laughs> Whereas on X2, it, it's so disorienting that I kind of was like, okay, I need to gather my thoughts and my brain uh, for a second. So I could not tell you what seat I rode in. I am pretty sure it was one of the outer seats. I uh, don't believe it was the last row. I think because the because of the line, we just went wherever uh, we were seated. So fortunately, I don't have any hot takes on individual seats, but it, it was a just unreal experience. And I, I need to get back and, and ride it again and try to digest everything. Yeah. I haven't ridden. I haven't ridden X2, but if you want to talk steaming pile of <laughs> garbage ride experiences, I want to go back to Six Flags over Georgia. And I know they've re kind of retracted or put new trains on and changed it, or, you know, changed the paint, changed the name. Ninja at Six Flags over <laughs> Georgia was bar none the roughest coaster ride I have ever been on. And I'm really surprised I didn't get off that ride with my ears bleeding from just banging up against the yeah. shoulder head restraints when I was a kid. I mean, this this takes me right into the, the next one hot take, which is from uh it's it's Y E uh B O L Dylan. It's your boy I don't know. Dylan 13. There we go. I can't believe I I couldn't read that. Anyways, uh it's your boy Dylan 13 says aero coasters are pretty bad. People are just blinded by nostalgia. Look, if we're talking biggest steaming pile of garbage, uh, Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Gold Rusher at Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, never planning on riding those coasters again. I thought Viper was horrendous. I thought it was just insanely rough, insanely uncomfortable. Gold Rusher was not as bad, but definitely not a comfortable ride. And yeah, people are just blinded by nostalgia. I I suppose so. Um, I think a lot of people really enjoy aero coasters just as they're gotten older i think they're just really hard to um upkeep you can't really retract them like you 
can a wooden coaster. But yeah, I, I am not a fan of the arrows that I have been on. But I don't know. You guys have probably been on more arrows than I have. Yeah, there are arrows that are good. I really like Carolina Gold Rush or Carowinds just because I, again, I look at it from that uh, blinded by nostalgia lens. But I've never really had a bad ride on the Carolina Gold Rusher. And granted, it's not an arrow looper. It's more of an arrow mine train. So it's not doing as much. And you don't have to go through the same 40 foot tall cloth eyed loop shape like you do on every other arrow looper coaster. But I think there are good arrows out there. Tennessee Tornado, John, I know is one of your favorites. And yeah. uh, the, what I remember from eight years ago was a, it was a really good ride. But yeah, I think it is it is one of those things is, as coaster enthusiasts, we like to kind of latch on to the nostalgia which is again going back to whoever it was who said that incredible hulk was the number two (laughs) roller coaster in the state of florida i mean sure it's it's great and for a long time it was in my top 10 just because it was like my first like really big coaster but i don't need that that bit of nostalgia yes john what did you think about viper well i'll say first i'm a very nostalgic sentimental person just in general and um so while I'm not clamoring to ride most aero coasters, I will say Dollywood's Tennessee Tornado was amazing, short and sweet, and I love that coaster. Um, I will say in general, yeah, they're they are not um, they you know you will not find an aero coaster in my top ten. Viper, I mean, it it definitely jostled me around. It was not the most comfortable ride. Again, it was one of those I wouldn't be running back uh, to get in line again to ride. But again, kind of. You know, going back to what I said about Superman, it was this coaster that I have seen pictures of and videos of. I mean, one of the the first videos I ever had as a kid was um, the Kid Songs Ride a Roller Coaster video, and it was filmed at uh, Magic Mountain. And so these are coasters that I've been watching and have been looking at pictures of and videos of since I was, you know, I could barely read. And so finally riding Viper was very surreal. And, you know, if I went to Magic Mountain all the time, then Viper would be like, meh. But um, I enjoyed it for just for the partially just for the fact that it's it's a part of a dying breed. And, you know, I was there. No telling if it's still going to be there the next time I go. So, um, yeah, it was it was fun, but uh, definitely not for, you know, being an amazing ride on its own. I am, uh, oddly enough, when we posted this thing, we've got two takes about Flight of Fear, one at King's Dominion and one at King's Island. Gay Turkey, LOL, says Flight of Fear is top three rides in the park at King's Dominion, presuming this turkey is ranking uh, Flight of Fear behind Intimidator 305 and Twisted Timbers. I would... I'd struggle to say it's in the top three coasters at King's Dominion, uh, especially top three rides in the park. You, if you throw in, you know, Delirium, and I love the Eiffel Tower at King's Dominion. I know it's not really a ride. It's more of like an elevator, and you can get in an elevator in any skyscraper in America. But I have to ride the Eiffel Tower every time I'm at King's Dominion. And Twist Timbers is great. Dominator, also really good. So Flight of Fear is okay i'm i'm not a fan of the launch you know those the i love premiere rides but those spaghetti bowl launches they are uh they hurt my inner ear to go back <laughs> to a uh, a previous hot take here and then dark sludge who says flight of fear is the best coaster at king's island and oh, wow hard 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 disagree here and this is coming from somebody who has not ridden orion yet has not ridden mystic timbers but give me banshee give me diamond back give me the beast give me woodstock express give me adventure express give me oh my gosh i just give me like boo blasters on boo hill do they have one of those there i'll take that i mean like flight of fear is okay but like at king's island where they have such a stellar stellar coaster lineup I uh I can't get behind that take at all. Yeah, no, no comment. <laughs> I can't, I can't even. I mean, this is you know, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but that this is a uh, in yeah. You, you just don't Next. hear that. <laughs> you never hear same thing with the barnstormer. You don't hear that. Like uh, yeah, it's just very surprising. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go into uh, my home park, Carowinds, and there are 
uh, dissenting opinions about Nighthawk, which is the Vekoma flying coaster, uh, formerly known as Borg Assimilator. The Nighthawk at Carowinds is a piece of bleep and should be torn down. And that is Tough Titty 03 said that. And there's so much stuff I got to bleep with this, <laughs> this particular tweet. And then Zai Sorel on Twitter says Nighthawk is elite, top 10 elite. Okay, on the scale of these two tweets, I tend to side more uh, with Tough Titty 03, and I have to if I have to say that again, I don't really <laughs> want to. But I will say Nighthawk at Carowinds has probably seen better days. I I love Carowinds. I love it a lot. We're gonna have them on the podcast here in a couple of weeks to celebrate their Park Mania win. But I am of the opinion that you could tear down both Nighthawk and vortex which is basically adjacent to nighthawk and you could free up a really really big piece of land for something big there that's what i think john i know you've been to carowinds i mean do you have a nighthawk opinion yeah i you know nighthawk is a very photogenic coaster um i love the color it's you know yeah it's aesthetically pleasing the ride itself it was pretty much a one and done for me so um and i agree with with your with your you know, opinion on, on Vortex as well. I think those are two coasters that are a little past their prime. And um, I think that's, they're sitting on some very valuable real estate. So it'll be interesting to see what, what happens to, to that land in the next decade or so. Um, but yeah, it, that's, that's a tough sell to call it a, 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 a top 10, except maybe top 10 Carowinds coasters. I don't know. <laughs> If you've ridden 11 coasters in your lifetime, I mean, it could make the top 10, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. pretty low on that list. Um, and then my, the other Carowinds take I want to discuss, and John, since you got to wax poetic about Lightning Rod, um, I'm going to fight Andrew Hyde from In The Loop, who says Fury isn't a top 20 coaster. Um, my personal biases aside, the Golden Ticket Awards, I mean, they're, they are a little biased, I guess, but there's a reason that Fury has continued to win the best steel coaster every year, I believe since 2016, 2017, something like that. It's won a lot of golden tickets. Like it's going to the Wonka factory at this point, and it's going to get stuck in the pipe with Augustus Gloop. But like, there's a reason it is so highly well regarded. And Andrew Hyde, again, <laughs> great person. One of, one of my favorite people on Twitter, I just like every time he says this and I see it pop up in my timeline and I've had this argument with him a couple of times on Twitter. I'm just like, I'm going to fight you. We're going to fight in the streets about Fury 325. But, you know, it's fine. I everybody is entitled, as John said, to their wrong opinion. It's fine. And then after that, we're going to uh, we'll go down to Bush Gardens, Tampa. We're going to talk about Shane. I know one of your favorite coasters. Uh, Scott Smitty says Cheetah Hunt is the most fun coaster in Florida, at least maybe until Velasa Coaster opens. This is, I feel like, a fair take when you look at Florida as a whole. Um, I can think of several coasters I enjoy more than Cheetah Hunt. Cheetah Hunt right now, as it stands, probably the best coast, most fun coaster to me at Busch Gardens Tampa in the entire state, I feel like is a little much right now. Uh, I'm going to go the polar opposite of what you just said. I think with West Coast Racers, Cheetah Hunt is the most fun coaster I have ever ridden. Uh, That doesn't mean it's the best. Uh, That doesn't mean it's my favorite. Certainly isn't. But I just have so much fun from beginning to end on that ride. Um, you know, other rides like, you know, X2 or Superman sky rush. I appreciate those. I enjoy those, but cheetah hunt is just a blast of a coaster. Anyone can ride that. Um, it's a great step up for somebody looking to get into bigger coasters. Uh, it has three awesome launches, a uh, great inversion and the theming is just fun. The scenery is cool. Um, yeah, the last coaster, I think is going to give it a run for its money, but in terms of pure fun, uh, Cheetah hunt takes it for me and moving to universal Orlando, uh, Matthew FDZ says Woody Woodpecker is an e-ticket attraction for those people that don't know Woody Woodpecker is the kitty coaster, uh, in the kids area. Um, I agree. I would rank this ride uh, above a lot of the other rides at Universal Orlando. Now, I'm of course kidding. What are you talking about? Woody Woodpecker is an e-ticket attraction. That's, I mean, that's wild. I, I, I'm hoping that this is a joke comment, but I mean, you never know. Some people, you know, Barnstorm or Flight of Fear, uh, 
they rank those high. So I, I don't know. I mean, look, e-ticket attraction. Yeah, if the ticket, if the ticket, you just can't. Z, sure. Yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't. It, it just doesn't. I mean, it's just factually not an e-ticket attraction. Um, so anyway, we're going to move past that. Uh, Farm stuffs with a Z says, "Rip Ride Rocket is a fun coaster." I totally agree. I think it gets hated on uh, way too much. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's a unique ride, um, and it's kind of an icon, sort of the same way Incredible Hulk is at Islands of Adventure. Uh, Rip Ride Rocket is kind of the iconic uh, Universal Orlando Skyline view coaster, and I, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I think Rip Ride Rocket again. It's a very it's a spectacle of a of a coaster. It's got it's a little gimmicky with the onboard audio. It is uh, it is fun. I I rode it once. Um, also did Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure last time there. I did both in one day. Would not recommend. Um, so it you know it wasn't a standout moment of the day by any stretch of the imagination. But it's fun. It's it's unique. Um, definitely more of an e-ticket attraction than Woody Woodpecker is. Um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's a good ride. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't, I don't disagree with this. Yeah. I think, I mean, you got to look at, you have to look at Rip Ride and Rocket in the whole scale. It was built in a different time. It was built in the pre Comcast universal Harry Potter funded frenzy that they're currently in right now. Um, <laughs> looking back, do you think they would build this coaster again when there's really no IP behind it other than a handful of music by the Universal Music Group music group or whoever? No, <laughs> but I think it's fun. And I mean, it's tough to beat listening to Blue Man Group or uh, the Muppets while riding a roller coaster, in my opinion. OK, here's here's a really I didn't like this one, but I wanted to talk about it. Yeah, me neither. So we got Starports on Twitter and Starports. If you're listening, I apologize for like blowing this up. Your hot take is Velocicoaster is very overhyped and overrated. It is today. We are recording this on April 15th. This coaster does not open until June 10th. How can it be overrated already? This is my biggest problem. And I see it literally all the time in the coaster community. Something. It's just a fact. Something cannot be overrated before it exists i mean no one's written this how uh, overhyped is one argument but overrated the thing's not open i hear i heard the same thing about iron Gwazi. oh it's overrated it's not better than whatever as far as i'm concerned like i said it doesn't exist no one's been on it yet so you can't rate it against anything else because nobody's been on it so you know that overhyped you could make the claim for that to be fair starports also says that they're excited to ride it it looks fantastic uh but they think it was more overhyped compared to hagrid's um which i think both of them are, are pretty hyped up but yeah overrated you just can't say that about something that's not open yeah i don't know maybe he's from the maybe starports is from the future you know you never know maybe he knows something we don't maybe or you know some people some people have written it like employees or people yeah. read it for commercial shoots if that's the case starports then come on podcast and tell us about it because i i would love to hear it if you've been on it um but yeah if not yeah i think shane you're a jurassic park fan like i am so even if the coaster is not great just huge being in that environment i mean jurassic park and jurassic world i'm a huge fan of both of those totally, so totally. It's, even if the coaster is mad which I don't, I don't think it will be it might not be the best but i'm, I'm so excited for it i'm so excited and we've got we've got one last one i mean this is we right now we're, we're at the end of two weeks of podcast episodes hot takes and we need to start talking about you know other things um but i want to end with uh what uh drew the intern said and he said Having other interests outside of roller coasters and theme parks is a good thing. It makes you a more interesting person. And to Drew, I say, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely agree with this. Um, obviously, uh, the more interest somebody has, it makes them a well-rounded person. I personally, I love college sports. I love writing. I love, I mean, obviously, I love theme parks, just like presumably everybody listening to this podcast. But yeah, your whole identity does not need to be coasters. Yeah, John, who has park maps on the wall behind him. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I'm, those are it is, I, I am no longer in college. It is time for those <laughs> to come down. So that is very much in the pipeline. I mean, I don't know I who 
I don't know who would disagree with this. You know, ha- having one interest certainly should not be the case for anyone. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of times people, uh, you know, coaster community kind of especially lets it overwhelm them and take over them. You know, it's important to have a variety of hobbies and interests. Um, and, you know, I mean, look, we just recorded for an hour and a half about hot takes <laughs> about roller coasters. So, uh, you know, we we get it, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, this is a great hobby. It's a lot of fun, but like Drew, the intern is saying, you gotta, you gotta have some other interests too. Yeah, it's, it's a great hobby. It, it really is a great hobby because it is a little bit more niche than some of the other, you know, more mainstream hobbies. It's a great fun fact. Anytime you have to introduce yourself at some sort of event and share a fun fact, it makes for a great a great tidbit of information, but yeah, I totally agree. I think it's, it's very important to have other, uh, to have other interests and, um, think it, especially during the off season, we can get a little, a little slow. You need some time to, to occupy the, the slower parts of the year. So, um, I fully agree with this. Yeah. John, you, you bring up the icebreaker thing. When I tell people I write for a roller coaster website, they look at me really weird. So <laughs> I don't know who's, who's doing your icebreakers, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Well, that's going to do it for episode two of our uh, theme park and coaster hot takes. We'll probably come back to this topic again soon. But if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you're liking, rating, reviewing, subscribing, all of those other buzzwords that help people find our show. Uh, Be sure to follow us on social media. We're at Coaster 101. And if you've got any other hot takes, and that Coaster 101 is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you've got any other hot takes, send them our way. You can hit us up on social media or email us at podcast at Coaster101.com. Also, our website, Coaster101.com. We may compile these hot takes into, you know, some of the other hot takes we didn't get to into an article on the site, but there's a lot of great content coming down the pipeline. Thanks as always to Justin Mabry of JM Music Design for our theme music. We appreciate you listening to the hot takes. Talk to y'all again next week. See ya.